Hello Ruby, I'd like to interview you today about John Thrussell, who lived in Purton. Right. Can you tell me your connection with him? Well, John Thrussell was my father-in-law. I married his youngest son, Marcus, and Marcus was the youngest of seven children. Gosh, that was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot, yes. <laughs> and who was John married to? He was married to, she was an Ethel Montgomery, and I think they might have come from Hitchin, I'm not sure. Yes. Not a Burton family. No, but the Thrussells were. The Thrussells were, oh, yes. Um, and where did they live? Um, they lived in the last two houses in Cromwell Terrace. Um, that's the end next to Cromwell Farm. And um, they lived in the end house, which was their home. And the house next door was the post office. Oh, yes. Was there, uh, and how was the house arranged then? So the post office was, um, I think that must be number 60. I'm not sure how the numbers like that. go. 63 Cromwell Terrace. But their house was the end one. Yes. And they had a front room and a kitchen. And then next door was the shop and post office, um, which the post office was at the front of the house. And at the back, um, it was my father-in-law's workshop, come sorting office, come general purpose room. It, it all happened in the back room. Yes. Um, but the front room was the post office. Yes. I think you were saying that he built um, a bathroom there as well. Yes, of course, those houses didn't have bathrooms. I think they had toilets across the yard at the back. And um, my father-in-law was quite a clever man. He liked doing things. He was always up for a challenge. And um, he built a bathroom. <laughs> I don't think people would use it today. It had a tin roof. And Marcus always said you could hear the spiders walking across it. <laughs> I think it was very basic, but at least it was a bath. So they could actually sit in a bath. <laughs> yes, not, not like not many people in Perton did at that time. I think. They certainly didn't. No, because I think John uh, John Fussell died in in the sixties. So yes, it, he did. yes, we're, we're talking really about the fifties. That sort of oh yes, and forties, yes, forties and fifties. Yes. That sort of period. Yes. Um, can you tell me more about the post office? What happened in the post office? How was it? Well, the post office, um, as I said, it was the front room of the cottage. And you went in and there was a counter in front of you. And um, John would sit behind the counter. And I think all of, there were postcards and different things that he sold, probably pens. It was a little shop as well. And um, you'd tell him what you wanted to do and he would help you to do it. Yes. What sort of um, things did he sell? I think you were telling me... He sold um, things like stamps, stationery, postal yes, at, orders. Um, yes, at the post office you would buy stamps. I think the elderly people collected their pensions there. And um, you could buy a postal order. What's that? Um, well, years ago you didn't send a cheque to someone. If you wanted to send a birthday present or money through the post, you would buy a postal order for, say, two shillings or ten shillings and um, you would post that to someone or give it to them and they could then go to the post office and cash it and get the money for it. Good. Yes, you mentioned shillings there. What, what, what was that? Oh, shillings. Well, our money was pounds, shillings and pence up until the early 70s when we went, we were decimalised. But um, yes, our money was pounds, shillings and pence. Yes, I think I remember those days. You had farthings and... Oh, yes. Farthings, halfpennies, um, thrupney pieces, half, half crowns. crowns. Crown, if you were lucky. Not many people had a crown, but I think there were such things. Yes, I think a crown was worth five shillings. And... Five shillings. And what about a florin? A florin was um, a two shilling piece. <laughs> It's a lot, a lot more coinage uh, then. A lot of coins, yes. yes. Yes, we didn't have many notes in those days. <laughs> yes. And what about the post? How, when it, it, the post was delivered to Hitchin, to, to, sorry, the post was delivered to Purton by a van from Hitchin, I presume? Yes, I think it came from Hitchin um, by van and I would think it came in a sack and it would be taken round to the 
back room at the back of the post office where it was then sorted into the roads of Purton and um, prepared to be delivered. Into, what, into pigeonholes then? Pigeonholes, yes, we had pigeonholes on the wall um, with the, the names of the roads on them and, and you would sort them into roads. And then I presume you picked up a road and would sort it into either house numbers or by where people lived because you knew where people lived. If it was a Mr Brown, you'd know he was at number two and uh, so it was quite easy to sort them. Addresses were not so important in those days. No, I mean, sometimes Mr Thrusser would get a, a letter to be delivered to, say, Joe Brown in Purton and he would know who it was. You, you knew or you knew somebody that would know who it was. Yeah, I'm finding that uh, there weren't addresses very much in the in the village. It was by Coxall's Farm or by uh, Ashton's Bakery. Definitely, yes. And I think there was a note in the parish council minutes that in the 1947 they had Town Street, which was a common sort of name in villages, uh, was changed to High Street. So it, 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 it was quite different. And I know there was Dead Horse Lane, which is Royal Oak Lane now. Yes, yeah, so I don't actually names. remember those names. I, I don't ever remember Town Street being, I always remembered it as High Street, but we did call it Uptown and Downtown, so I suppose that's where that originated from. Yes, it's much more remembering where people lived and yes. knowing, the, knowing the people in the village. Yes, and I certainly don't remember Royal Oak Lane being Dead Horse Lane, because I've been very upset to live there. <laughs> I think also I found that in the school records, the admission books, it was also called Silver Street. Really? Yes. Wow, well, I didn't know that at no. all. No, and I, 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 the Dead Horse Lane has actually come from a map. I've got a map really? with Dead Horse mm. Lane on, and then, yeah. um, then the school records saying Silver Street. Well, I didn't know that. No. No, that's completely Of course, the Royal Oak was the pub halfway down, yes, wasn't it? Yes, it was, it? yes. Near where you lived. Next, yes. Um... What about other things at the post office? You mentioned telegrams. Um, what were yes. telegrams? Telegrams, well, I don't actually know how they came, whether they came by the telephone. I'm, not, I'm really not sure, but I know that um, John Thrussell at the post office would receive telegrams and then they had to be delivered to people in the village who they were going to. Sadly, a lot of them were about people that had been killed in the war. Um, which was very upsetting to have to deliver those. Mm. But I don't honestly know how they got to the post office. No, no. Um, and what about the telephone? In the, uh, telephones weren't common in people's houses. No, there was a telephone at the post office, obviously. And um, I think sometimes if you wanted to contact someone, you would ask Mr Thrussell to, if you could use the telephone, or he would make a telephone call for you. Or, of course, there was a telephone kiosk in Crabtree Lane. Oh, well, yes, when I, was that there? Well, I remember it being there when I was a child. And, um, if, yes, of course, we, we, you could make a telephone call from there. I'd, I'd sort of forgotten that. And you put the pennies in the slot, You did, yes. Put your 2p in, two pennies in. You press button um, B. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And then press button A to get your money back if you couldn't get through. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I... Did you have a telephone at home? Oh, no, no, we, we never had a telephone. And what well, about later on when they became introduced? Were, 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 did everybody have a phone? Or um, It was more common. My um, uncle and aunt that lived in the next door house. Where's that? Um, in Royal Oak Lane, yes. uh, which was the old bakery. Um, they, they were the first ones that I remember to have a telephone. And, um, you when know... What was that it, about? in the 50s and if you heard their telephone ringing we used to run round and answer it I don't think they were very pleased but we just thought oh you know it's a telephone call we have to answer it yes and I think also people shared lines didn't they you didn't yes you had a party line yes when you applied for a telephone quite often you'd have to go on a party line to start with before you could get your own line yes yes um, also, besides running the post office, um, what else did uh, Mr Thrussell do? Did, he was 
I understand from the census is he was a, a, a boot maker or a repairer? I think he did repair shoes. Um, I, I think he did it mainly for the family when I knew him because we had um, a shoe mender or a cobbler, as we used to call them, uh, a Mr Jack Lawrence that had a workshop in Berry End. So we took our shoes to him to be mended. But I think John Thrussell, he would certainly have mended all the family's shoes. Yes. Did he, Did Mr Lawrence um, live up in Berry End or what, what was this place? That... No, uh, Mr Lawrence actually lived in Cromwell Terrace, about two houses away from the post office. I see. And it was just his um, workshop. Yes. In Berry End. Yes, I understand um, that he... Um, mended things like Wellingtons and things like that, which you wouldn't think of today. No, I, th I think we had a little um, a rubber square that you stuck on for Wellingtons. Yes, I'm sure that was so. And people have told me that he had a, um, a monkey. He did. Now, where the monkey came from, whether someone that had brought it back from abroad, or I, I don't know, but certainly it was quite a novelty that Jack Lawrence had got a monkey in his workshop. The monkey, I think, was called Ginny. Well, I don't know that. <laughs> um, yes. Um, also, um, I was going to ask you about um, John Lawrence, uh, sorry, John Thrussell sort of did a lot of things around the village. He, I think he was chair of the parish council and all sorts of sort of different jobs and things like that. But I was going to ask particularly about his, his interest in, in astronomy. Yes, he, he was very interested in astronomy and he built his own observatory um, on a piece of land that they called the drying land. Where's that? Well, it was at the back of the row of cottages and I would imagine it's where the people that lived in the cottages used to have their washing lines because it was always known as the drying ground. And um, he built an observatory and with a telescope in it and um, he, he was very well respected and he used to send reports of what was happening to the stars to Jodrell Bank in America. Um, so yes, he, he was widely known as an astronomer and he was very interested. If anything interesting was happening in the skies, the post uh, business would have to stop. He'd call his wife in, can you come and serve so-and-so? I've just got to go and look at Venus. Or if she wasn't available, the post office would shut. Um, but yes, his astronomy interest came first. And you used to call it the Dome of Discovery? We called it his Dome of Discovery, but because nobody actually went in it, so I don't know what was inside it. But, I have um, actually got a photograph got of a that. You've got a photograph, yes. yes. Um, yeah. So he had that land out there. Um, what about other land he owned in the village or rented? or? Um, he rented a piece of land at the back of Cromwell Farm. I'm not sure if it's called Cromwell Farm now. Cromwell House. Um, Cottage, Crom yes. yes. Um, there was a lot of farmland at the back of that house and um, he rented a large part of that. Who from? Uh, um, it, the farmer was Fred Whedon and um, he, he had beehives and grew vegetables and flowers and the children, his children, camped up there. It, it was a lov lovely place because it was sort of in the middle of nowhere, very peaceful place and he would him and his wife would go and sit up there and read or whatever they did because it, it was a lovely place with flowers all round. Um, and, and therefore, um, when he retired from the post office, what happened then? Well, Where he, did he go? He moved to a cottage at the back of the post office, um, behind the yard for Cromwell Terrace. Uh, there are two cottages and he moved into one of those. I think it was owned by Mr. Hallworth, and I think they rented it. Yes. And so they, they spent their retirement there. And, and what happened to the post office then? Well, the post office, um, the, the actual shop where the post office was, I think that was taken over by Mr. Hallworth for a hardware shop, and the post office was moved to um, Mr. Reynolds' shop in Crabtree Lane. He already had a grocery shop, and I think he opened the post office in his shop. I think that's number one and one and three Crabtree Lane. It could just be. At the beginning, opposite the fox. That's right. Yes. 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 Oh, thank you very much. 